Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here with Brother Bro, and it's time for Best Supporting Actor and Actress Predictions for the month of June. Supporting Actress Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower Moon. So even after I saw the movie for a little bit, I was still like, okay, that is a subtle performance. That is like Kirsten Dunst in Power of the Dog to me, and they'll go with a bigger performance. But then I kind of changed my mind. If the movie's winning Best Picture, like, forget about it, she's winning. The buzz around the performance, the amount that people already want to give her the Oscar without even seeing it, I think there's something there. And it would be a historic win as well. And I think she has enough screen time. Maybe this is just me. I wanted the movie to maybe give her a little bit more. But it'll also be interesting to see if other voters feel like that. And then they go for... Daniel Brooks, the big showy singing, crying performance, right? But I'm just trying to speak objectively based on like what I hear, what, what, what others are saying about her performance. Everybody else is basically like, easily give her the Oscar, no questions asked. Do you think that Fantasia Barrino would win an Oscar and then Daniel Brooks wouldn't come along with it? I mean, that could happen, but I have heard that Daniel Brooks at, at points is gonna like steal the movie from her. Right. At points is gonna steal the, the movie. That's the thing. I'm wondering how someone who steals a movie in a supporting role doesn't win and the, the, the lead person does win. If Killers wasn't number one, I would more consider another person. But I also think Lily Gladstone has a more interesting narrative. I think we both acknowledge Daniel Brooks still very strong, could could yeah. still win. And I don't think people should say that the race is locked up either. I don't wanna I don't think that we need to hear that. Taraji P. Henson's also gonna come along. I feel like these three actresses are just gonna like go everywhere and like, you know, hold SAG awards together and shit. Divine Joy Randolph for the holdovers, I mean that is going to happen if the movie is in Best Picture. That is going to happen. But if it's in Best Picture, Paul Giamatti will probably happen. I agree. And you don't have him in now. Scary. He's been snubbed before, but I also feel like because he's been snubbed, it, it's like it'd enough be, is it'd enough. be crazy if enough is enough. Him. Yeah, enough is enough. Rosamund Pike <laughs> and Saltburn. I put her in over Viola Davis because I kind of was like, look, I'm taking air out. I'm taking yeah. Viola out. I don't think Viola is stronger than the movie. Saltburn is also the kind of thing like that's going to get an acting nomination if it's in Best Picture too. It'd probably have a SAG Ensemble. Okay, so also you have Julianne Moore not in your five, and I know this is this is a crowded category. I already feel you feel like there's a scenario where. Natalie Portman gets in, but she doesn't. Every, Feels like they would Every single possible scenario is possible with May, December. Everything from none of the actors getting nominated to all three getting nominated and literally any combination in between is possible. So just Charles Melton, just Julianne Moore. Sure, just Julianne sure. Moore. I feel like that's the least possible out of all of them. Why? I don't know. She's also doing a lot. Her yeah. character's weird and she has weird crying fits. I'm telling you, everybody's great and gives. So why big don't you have her in over Rosamund Pike? Because I feel like May December is seen not Saltburn. gonna get all the nominations it needs because it's not gonna be a Best Picture, and Saltburn is gonna be a Best Picture. Yeah, but you're not that confident in Saltburn, and you've seen May December. And the fact is that you think that May December could very well get acting nominations without Best Picture. Yeah, but right now the scenario that I'm gonna bet on is Natalie Portman, Charles Melton. That's it. The combo of Rosamund Pike and Emerald Fennell is like good to me. That just yeah, seems like I, agree. I can't wait for that. Do you um, think uh, Lashana Lynch in the Bob Marley movie is just the wife? You wife? know, we talked about this before. It's oh, the director the King of Richard. King Richard, the writer of King Richard. So oh, yeah. you never know they if she's Anjanou Ellis. They give some attention. You never know if she's Anjanou Ellis, like, she brought that character more life than it could have had. And I think the writing did just a little bit more than it could have with her. I think the Bob Marley movie will be a little more grounded, too, than other music biopics and maybe mm -hmm. give a little bit more room for like these side characters it better not just be like a fucking concert movie it's not gonna be a concert movie because you can't do that with bob marley it's not the same people who saw the trailer said it's it's not it's more of just like a biopic tilda swinton and the killer jodie foster naiad carrie mulligan and saltburn she also might be good Anjou ellis and nickel boys i don't know who she is by the way people say there's not like a prominent female role in the movie. emily blunt for oppenheimer we'll see there's nothing in the trailer for her she's probably gonna be like maggie gyllenhaal from I don't the Dark Knight. Nolan getting a female role nominated doesn't seem like it would happen. I would love to see Merv Dizdar for About Dry Grasses get an Oscar nomination. She won Best Actress at Cannes, but it's not gonna happen. Sandra Huller in The Zone of Interest. Some people are trying to say she's gonna get Best Actress. You could throw everybody in supporting just because nobody is like a lead in a weird way. I mean, maybe her and Christian Friedel are leads, but it's like, you could get away with supporting. The actors are very much in service of the overall vision. And it's not like about them giving Oscar performances. And she's getting nominated for another movie, so I don't really believe in it. Supporting actor, I don't really know if I want to keep Ryan Gosling at number one, because it's like, really? It is a little like, huh? 
People say he's like a, a massive scene stealer, like runs yeah. away with the movie. And that's kind of the thing, that's kind of what you need to hear. And I don't think he can get in if Barbie's not in Best Picture, though. I feel like if Barbie gets an, an acting nomination, it's going to be Best Picture. But I would have said that about Black Panther Wakanda Forever, too, that like it wouldn't get an acting nomination without Best Picture, and lo and behold... Maybe he's number one. The other person I'm considering... So? At, do I want Killers at number one for supporting actor? I mean, in a way, I can see Robert De Niro winning for that movie. It's sort of a weird thing to win your third Oscar for. He is a really fucked villain. And he plays him the right amount of evil. And he has a lot of screen time. He has a lot of moments that are really good. I don't know, I feel like there was enough material in there where if he ended up being the winner, I, I couldn't be opposed to it. Do you think anyone else in Killers of the Flower Moon, Jesse Plemons? No, Jesse Plemons because is Jesse, not gonna happen. Because what if they... I, uh, okay, listen, I know. Power of the Dog. I don't care. We, been, I don't we, care. we, we, we wouldn't have seen that for miles. Uh, no, nah, uh, he cried and he had like a little, he had a little more percentage of that movie he's not in this movie that much and he doesn't do anything emotional and his character is not like a thing that you care about on a personal level all right i had to ask because people are going to be asking that question he's good in the scenes that he's in but it's not a lot just because he got nominated once for being not in that much of the movie of one of the biggest best picture movies that it's gonna happen with yeah. every movie that he's in, you know? Yeah. John Majaro for past lives, I mean, it's gonna happen, folks. It's gonna happen. Yeah, he's... Woo! <laughs> Woo! We got away. We got away that time. My reflexes have been proved immensely from this cat. If you've seen past lives, you understand, but like if, if you haven't, his character is really interesting and nuanced. It brings like a, a very intriguing element to the story and it makes it a lot deeper. He's gotta get nominated for this. Oh yeah. He's so good. You know, Teo Yu, if he goes supporting, I think I would put him in the top five. I think I would. When you talk about past lives, you do talk about those three performances. I kind of agree with you. That's a, this is an interesting thing to try to bet on. I think they know if they put him in actor, they're throwing him in with the wolves and he won't stand a chance to be well, nominated. Literally with Leonardo DiCaprio. Teo Yu is great in it, but I don't think he has a shot in lead, especially, you know, we were looking at through that and it's like, it's gonna be rough. It would be nice if everybody from past lives got nominated for an Oscar, though. I like, know. all three of them. Because it feels they a little should weird try. that I think they should like, put them in sport kind of on the sideline, and the other two are just getting all the nominations or whatever. I feel like it's a little bit of fraud, though, because I definitely felt watching the movie that he was lead. But he's not more of a lead than Greta Lee at all. Don't right. you think, in a sense, Ki Hoi Kwan was as much of a lead as Teo Yu is? No, I feel like Ki Hoi Kwan made... More sense of supporting. I think we should put Teo Yu in supporting. There are a lot of people who are actually right. predicting him in there, and I don't think it's silly to do it. I mean, I think if he's campaigned there, I kind of agree. And then Charles Melton for May, December. You know, he may not be Julianne Moore and Natalie Portman. He may not be an Academy Award winner or even a nominee. But man, he is so good in this movie. He is at least as good as Julianne Moore and Natalie Portman. Like, he's on par. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people find him to be the standout performance. And his performance performance is like really kind of weird and interesting and he has a couple oscar scenes if you want to call them that mm. he has so he's got showy all, moments he's got everything he needs i think a lot of people will be super blown away by him in the movie and so i'm gonna predict him i, I have a question for me where's robert downey jr for oppenheimer he's not in the trailer that much and there's no reason to expect that he's not just a guy in a suit in the supporting role in the movie. I'm not going for that. Oppenheimer, just none of this. He's not going to get any supporting no. hype for anybody. No. The only acting nomination from a Nolan movie so far is the freaking Joker. And I think Killian Murphy might be, you know, he might be the second one. But yeah. people acting like Oppenheimer is going to get like three acting nominations. You're not looking at like Nolan's movies and and like understanding. Well, it's like how, how people thought do. someone would get nominated for Dunkirk. Yeah. Mark Rylance for Dunkirk. That, that was oh my people god, people would not shut up about that. Brian Tyree Henry and Flint Strong. He's playing the boxing coach, and coach roles are usually showy, aren't they? For whatever reason. Yeah. Mark Ruffalo for Poor Things. Some of the things he's doing make me think, that's ah, not really a little happen, goofy. I feel like you like only get nominated if, if that movie's in Best Picture. And like, yeah. solidly in there, too. Jeremy Pope for the collaboration. It's very possible somebody gets nominated for this. You know, more likely him than the, the lead actor here. It's kind of a co lead. And it's Anthony McCartan play. It's kind of too Popes-ish. Coleman Domingo in the color purple. Some people are more confident about this. This role doesn't get nominated as much as the other three when you perform it on Broadway slash the movie from 1985. But Coleman Domingo is probably going to bring a lot to it. I think he'll mm. actually get some buzz. I think so too. And he's getting, they might, they could up the screen time for him, you know. It's Or it could be like how A Star is Born, like Sam Elliott's role wasn't yeah. like really like a 
a big thing, but then Sam Elliott I agree. Was just like brought a lot to it. Ben yeah. Affleck for Air, I think we were like just getting way yeah. too ahead of ourselves now by I'm saying done. like, watch out, watch out. I think that's like, t- that's not going to happen. Like if that happened, that would be fucking nuts. Shout out to Milo Machado Graner from Anatomy of a Fall. The kid's like 11 years old. Great. If he got nominated, I would I would thumbs up it. I don't think it's gonna happen because he's so young, but you'd pat he's him really on the good head after a baseball game. I give him like a little like tussle his hair. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Who will you get a double supporting nomination with?